Whenever I get sleepy at the wheel, I always stop for coffee. This time I was going along in western Texas, and I got sleepy. I saw a sign that said, gas, eat, so I pulled off. It was long after midnight. What I expected was a place like a bunch of others where coffee tastes like copper and the flies never sleep. What I found was something else. The tables were painted wood, and they looked as if nobody ever spilled the ketchup. The counter was spick and span. Even the smell was okay, I swear it. Nobody was there as far as customers. There was just this one old boy, really only about 40, getting grave, gray above the ears behind the counter. I sat down at the counter and ordered coffee and apple pie. Right away, he got me started feeling sad. I have a habit. I divide people up, winners and losers. This old boy behind the counter was the kind that they mean well. They could, they can't do enough for you, but their eyes have this gentle far away look and they can't win. You know, with their clean shirt and the little bow tie, it makes you feel sad just to look at them. Only take my tip, don't feel too sad. He brought the coffee steaming hot and it tasted like coffee. Care of cream and sugar? He asked. I said, please. And the cream was fresh and cold and thick. The pie was good too. Our, a car pulled up outside. The old boy glanced out to see if they wanted gas, but they didn't. They came right in. The tall one said, two coffees. Do you have a road map we could look at? I think so, the old boy said. He got their coffee first and then started rooting through a pile of papers by the telephone looking for a map. It was easy to see he was the type nothing's he was the type nothing's too much trouble for, tickled to be a service. I'm the same type here, if you want to know. I watched the old boy hunting for his map, and I felt like I was looking in a mirror. After a minute or two, he came up with the map. This one's a little out of date, but he put it on the counter beside their coffee. The two men spread out the map and leaned over it. They were all they were well dressed, like a couple of feed merchants. The tall one ran his finger along the Rio Grande and shook his head. I guess there's no place to get across this side of El Paso. He said it to his pal, but the old boy behind the counter heard him and lit up like a light bulb. You trying to find the best way south? I might be able to help you with that. How? Just a minute. He spent a lot of time going through the papers by the telephone again. Thought I might have a newer map, he said. Anything recent would show the Hackett Bridge. Anyway, I can tell you how to find it. Here is a town called Hackett, the tall one said, still looking at the map. It's on the river just at the end of the road. Looks like a pretty small place. Not anymore. It's just about double since they built the bridge. What happens on the other side? The short one asked the question. But both the feed merchant types were paying close attention. Pretty fair road, clear to Chihuahua. It joins up there with the highway out of El Paso and Juarez. The tall man finished his coffee, folded the map, put it in his pocket, and stood up. We'll take your map with us, he said. The old boy seemed startled, like a new kid at school when somebody pokes him in the nose to show him who's boss. However, he just shrugged and said, glad to let you have it. The feed merchants had a little conference on the way out, talking in whispers. Then they stopped in the middle of the floor, turned around, reached inside their jackets, and pulled guns on us. Automatic pistols, I think they were. You sit where you are and don't move the tall one said to me, and you get against the wall. Both of us did exactly what they wanted. I told you we were a lot alike. The short man walked over and pushed one of the keys of the cash register. Every little bit helps, he said, and he scooped the money out of the drawer. The tall man set the telephone on the floor, put his foot on it, and jerked the wires out. Then they ran to their car and got in. The short man leaned out the window and shot out once of one of my tires. Then they took off fast. I looked at the old boy behind the counter. He seemed a little pale, but he didn't waste any time. He took a screwdriver out of a drawer and squatted down beside the telephone. I said, it doesn't always pay to be nice to people. He laughed and said, well, it doesn't usually cost anything, and went on taking the best plate, the base plate off the telephone. He was a fast worker, actually. 
His tongue was sticking out of the corner of his mouth. In about five minutes, we had a, he had a dial tone coming out of the receiver. He dialed a number and told the rangers about the men in their car. They did, he said. Well, well, well. No, not El Paso. They took the hackett turn off. After he hung up, he said, it turns out those guys robbed a supermarket in Wichita Falls. I shook my head. They sure had me fooled. I thought they looked perfectly all right. The old boy got me another cup of coffee and opened himself a bottle of pop. They fooled me too at first. He wiped his mouth. Then I got a load of their shoulder holsters when they leaned on the counter to look at the map. Anyway, they had mean eyes, I thought. Didn't you? Well, I didn't at the time. We drank without talking for a while, getting our nerves back in shape. A pair of patrol cars went roaring out by outside and squealed their tires around the Hackett turnoff. I got to thinking and thought of the saddest things yet. You knew there was something wrong with those guys, but you still couldn't keep from helping them on their way. He laughed. Well, the world's a tough sort of place at best, is how I look at it. I can understand showing them the map, I said, but I'd never have told them about the bridge. Now there's a, a not a chance of catching them. If you kept your mouth shut, there'd at least be some hope. There isn't any. Not a shred. There isn't. There isn't any. Not a shred, I went on. Not with a car as fast as they've got. The, the way the old boy smiled made me feel better about him and me. I don't mean there isn't any hope, he said. I mean there isn't any bridge.